this is Dr. Janet Bruno. Today I want to talk about a subject that everyone has some information on, but I want to make sure it's crystal clear, and that is what exactly causes a heart attack. Now, the real nature of heart attack is relatively unknown by the layperson, which is why I want to spend some time. Most people are aware only of the symptoms, if that, and maybe not much else. But there's really a need to go beyond the symptoms and delve deeper into the mechanism of a heart attack. The underlying causes of a heart attack are really central to understanding the principles of good cardiac health. If you want to have a strong heart, it's really important for you to really understand what causes a heart attack and therefore what you can do to prevent that. Now, the precursor of heart attacks is heart disease. One of the most important causes of heart disease is a substance known as quote-unquote plaque. Now plaque is a greasy substance composed of several layers made up of fats, cholesterol, protein, immune system cells, and a few other cells which tend to clump together along the walls of the coronary arteries. Now this leads to varying degrees of blockage in your arteries. Now when such a blockage or a plaque buildup is present, it actually signals the presence of heart disease. So that's actually very crystal clear. If there is plaque, you do have heart disease. Now there's a common misconception about blockage, and that misconception is the bigger the plaque, the more serious your condition is. And that's actually not true. In a minority of cases that may be true, but Several studies have been done that showed that there were blockages of up to 90% of a vessel. And this was actually done in healthy young soldiers who had no symptoms whatsoever. But what they found in these very large plaques is that they happened slowly and gradually. And when they happened gradually, even though they were severe, only uh, as much as 90%, because it happened slowly, it allowed the body to adjust the blood flow. What I mean by that is this adjustment, you know, the blood has to go through, but if it's a slow buildup, what happens is the body creates new vessels to do like a little bypass around that area of the vessel that's blocked. So these new vessels in the medical world are called quote unquote collaterals. So they're collateral vessels. And that's built up slowly over time to prevent any catastrophic blockage from occurring. So it's really not the vessels that have the big, big plaques that are the most dangerous. Actually, research is showing it's the smaller blockages, the smaller plaques, usually under 50% of the artery being blocked by that. These are actually the ones that are most dangerous and most commonly cause heart attacks. Now let me explain why, because it's kind of counterintuitive. These smaller and younger plaques, because they're newer, they're actually feel, filled with fatty deposits. And these are the plaques that are the most dangerous. When these plaques rupture, so they're like a little lining with outside of the, where the fatty part resides, if that lining ruptures, the fatty deposits are quickly released into the bloodstream. Now the body has an amazing response team, sort of like when you dial 911, the paramedics come quickly. Well, body has its own version of that. And so the body's amazing response team sends clotting factors to repair this injury in the vessel wall that that young plaque just ruptured. Now this happens very quickly. And so it doesn't really give the body any time to develop those collateral vessels I was talking about. So it's precisely this brisk clotting response by the body that can actually sometimes block off the entire artery. And it happens very quickly. And once this blockage is complete, blood flow is dramatically reduced or even stopped through that vessel, which effectively starves the heart of oxygen because blood flowing through it is carrying oxygen and oxygen is what the heart muscle needs. And when this oxygen starvation occurs, heart muscle actually begins to die. And this leads to the classic heart attack symptom, 
which many of you probably know, the crushing chest pain, the burning sensation down one arm, many other classic symptoms like this. This happens when the heart all of a sudden stops getting the blood flow carrying the oxygen. And for anyone, if you're listening to this, or if you've had a heart attack, or if you've known someone that has a heart attack, that experience can indeed be very scary. Now to give you some statistics to let you know how significant this is and how often it happens, um, some data at, in mid-2005, which is the last data that's really available for all this, the grim statistics really showed that in one year, there was 1.1 million heart attacks in the United States alone. That's a lot of heart attacks. And also more concerning, for every 10 people who get a heart attack, three of them will not survive. They will die from that heart attack. So clearly it's a very, very serious, serious condition and a serious disease, and you really want to do what you can to prevent it. So in a nutshell, summary, the heart attack is caused by blockage of an artery, which then leads to oxygen starvation of the heart muscle, which leads to death of the heart muscle, which eventually really causes the heart to stop pumping. And furthermore, just a clarification that arterial blockages that can be as high as 90% have been found in healthy young men, soldiers, who are asymptomatic, so they do have heart disease. But the more deadlier blockages are the ones associated with the newer, smaller plaques, which can lead to the rapid obstruction, denying the body a chance to build up that collateral network. So this, in a nutshell, obviously I'm using some layman terms. I, I'm hoping that this is presented to you in a way you can understand because it's very important to visually understand what's going on. If you can grab this understanding and really embrace it and understand this is what's going on in your body or someone else's body who's had a heart attack, that really gives you a lot of inspiration to try to do what you can to prevent this from happening to you. So what I can share is the one thing that's been confirmed in just hundreds and hundreds of studies is that the level of total blood cholesterol is very strongly associated with the level of arterial blockage and therefore strongly associated with your risk of having a heart attack. So in other words, really excessive cholesterol leads to plaque, which leads to heart disease, which can lead to a fatal heart attack. So with this simplified explanation, it's really clear that minimizing the total blood cholesterol is a very effective avenue to pursue to prevent a heart attack. And I believe if you've heard any of my other videos, watched them, or read my articles, one of the best ways to get this total blood cholesterol under control and in the truly optimal level is to eat as many plant-based foods as possible. Now, I presented a lot of information. You may want to listen to this again. This is very important to have a good understanding. I hope you found it stimulating. This is Dr. Jana Bruno wishing you a healthy and a happy day.